This tutorial looks at acids and bases, and in particular those bases which are soluble, called alkalis. I'm also going to look at how indicators can be used to distinguish between acids and alkalis, and also different kinds of indicators. Some indicators have only got two colours, and therefore can only tell us whether a solution is acidic or alkaline. Litmus is unusual in that it changes at around about pH 7, and so is red in all acids and blue in all alkalis. Other simple indicators like methyl orange and phenolphthalein don't change at pH 7. Other indicators are called complex indicators, and one of these is a universal indicator. Universal indicator gives a range of different colours for different strengths of acid or alkaline. It gives a green colour for a neutral solution and increasingly red colours for acids and increasingly purple colours for alkalis. We can read off from the chart the pH number for an acid or an alkali or a neutral solution where the pH number runs from 0 through to 14. The closer to 0 the number is, the stronger the acid, and the closer to 14, the stronger the alkali. When using a universal indicator, there's three stages. You have to add some universal indicator paper, then compare the colour that you see with a colour chart, and read off from that colour chart the pH number of the solution. Here's a pH chart showing some of the common substances and their different pHs. At pH 7 or neutral is pure water. Weak alkalis contain such things as baking soda or sodium hydrogen carbonate and milk of magnesia. Whereas strong alkalis include liquid drain cleaner which is sodium hydroxide solution. At the acid end Weak acids include acid rain and orange and lemon juice, whereas at the strong acid end we have sulfuric acid which is used in car batteries. Here's a past paper question. This question is about acids and alkalis. Solutions can be acidic, alkaline or neutral. Match each type of solution to its pH. Well, a neutral solution would be pH 7, an alkaline solution would be more than 7, and an acidic solution would be less than 7. This question is about acids and bases. The pH scale shows how acidic or alkaline a solution is. So here at pH 7 we have a uh, universal indicator would be green, whereas as we go further towards 14, blue colours, and further towards 1, red colours. Look at the list and complete these sentences using words from the list. Solutions with a pH of 7 are, well the answer to this one would be neutral, and solutions with a pH of less than 7 would be acidic. Here's another question. Sally is testing the pH of soil in her garden. The garden's divided into five different areas called plots. She tests the soil on each plot. Look at the diagram, it shows her results. Which soil is the most alkaline? Well, the most alkaline soil would be the one with the highest pH. And looking at this, the highest pH would be soil A with a pH of 8. The table shows the names of some plants that Sally wants to grow. It also shows the soil pH the plants need to grow well. We use the information to answer these questions. Sally wants to grow potatoes. Which would be the best plot to plant them in? Well, when we have a look at the table, potatoes grow in a pH of 4.5 to 6. So when we look at each of these plots and we try to find one which has got a pH between 4.5 and 6, the only one we have here is E at 5.9 and therefore the answer would be plot E. Sally wants to increase the pH of plot D. Well here's plot D with a pH of 6.4. Which type of substance should she add to the soil? Choose from the list. Well, if she has an acidic soil and wants to increase the pH, she needs to add an alkali. So the answer here is alkali. Finally, potassium sulfate dissolves in water. A neutral solution is made. What's the pH of potassium sulfate solution? Well, a neutral solution has a pH of 7, which is one of the choices, so the answer is 7. Next, we're going to learn about the difference between the two words alkali and base and look at how alkalis or bases can react with acids in what's known as the neutralization reaction. 
Well, a base is any substance that reacts with an alkali to make a salt and a water only. So it's one of those things which will neutralise an acid, but it only makes a salt and water only. Bases can be soluble or insoluble. Soluble bases are given a special name. They're called alkalis. So an alkali is a soluble base. Here's a past paper question. Look at the table. It shows the name and formula of some bases. How many different elements are chemically bonded in sodium oxide? Well, we look for sodium oxide, which is here. We can see that there are two elements listed, Na and O. So the answer here is 2. And which base has a formula with five atoms in total? In the first one, we've got one nitrogen and three hydrogens. That makes a total of four. In the second one, we've got one calcium, two oxygens and two hydrogens. That looks like it's going to be five. Let's just check the others. Copper oxide, just two, a Cu and an O. And the sodium oxide, two Na's and an O. So the answer here is calcium hydroxide. The reaction between an acid and a base, in this case a soluble base, is called neutralisation and we use a method called titration. This involves the use of some particular equipment. Uh, one part is the burette here and the other part here is the conical flask. We start off with a measured volume of our alkali, sodium hydroxide, in the conical flask. And to show that it is alkaline, we add an indicator. In this case, we add litmus, which turns the solution blue. Now, to tell that the solution is neutral, then the indicator will have just changed colour from the blue to the red. In order to do this, we need to add the hydrochloric acid very carefully. We do this using the burette, turning the tap to add the hydrochloric acid a little at a time. When the solution has become just neutral, we read off the volume that has been used on the burette, and that tells us the exact volume of hydrochloric acid that reacts with 25 cubic centimetres of sodium hydroxide. But of course, we need to repeat this a number of times in order to get as accurate a value as possible. So, the neutralisation reaction is a reaction between an acid and an alkali. All acids, like hydrochloric acid, contain the same iron, the H plus iron, and it's this iron which makes the acid acidic. Likewise, all alkalis contain a second iron, the hydroxide iron, OH minus. When we've added the correct amount of an acid to an alkali, we get a neutral solution. So the reaction is called neutralisation. If, for example, we were to write a word equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, we'd end up with sodium chloride and water, HCl for the hydrochloric acid, plus NaOH for the sodium hydroxide, giving us NaCl and H2O. Here's a past paper question again. Sally adds a chemical to plot B. The pH of plot B changes from 7.5 to 7. What type of reaction has taken place? Well, if the pH of B was 7.5, that means it's slightly alkaline, and it's become 7, which is neutral, so the type of reaction is neutralisation. Here's another question. It says, look at the diagram. It shows the apparatus used to neutralise an acid with an alkali. What happens to the pH number of the acid as the alkali is added. Well here we're starting with the acid in the flask which will have a low pH and we're adding an alkali from the burette which will have a high pH. So the pH of the acid will increase as we add alkali to it until it becomes 7. Uh, and the reason is we are adding alkali which has a higher pH. This question is about acids and bases. What's the name of the type of reaction that happens when an acid reacts with a base? Well, we've looked at this a number of times and we now know that this is neutralisation. Finally, let's relate two things that we've learnt together. First of all, we've learned that all acids contain H plus ions. 
And we've also learnt that each acid has a pH number. The pH number is related to the concentration of those hydrogen ions because pH actually stands for a German term, potence hydrogen or power of hydrogen.